how, you know, a smell can bring me back into, I mean, I can go back to seven years old and I feel like I'm in that moment or I'm in the car and I can smell that, that, you know, air freshener and I'm back in that very, very situation. So what is this? Can you tell us about this? I mean, there's got to be some sort of real science then to this. So absolutely. So it is true that our sense of smell is uniquely connected to the parts of the brain where emotion is processed, where emotional memory is processed, and where associations get formed. So what happens is once upon a time when you first experienced that smell, you were in whatever situation that was, and it was emotionally meaningful to you. And there was a link that was just established between that scent and that experience. And then subsequently, every time you smell that same scent, it immediately triggers that original association. And with that original association comes feeling because there's absolutely a direct path. So the first place in the brain after the olfactory bulb, which is just very kind of basic processing, that the next set place in the brain that smell information goes to is the amygdala, which is a structure in the limbic system where emotion and emotional memory is processed. And the next little step is where the associations get formed in the hippocampus. So there's immediately this surge of, of emotion and association. And none of our other senses have the same connection. So this is a very intimate, unique link. Could you argue that taste maybe is the next closest thing? No? No, so people always kind of mix up. I mean, people say taste when they actually always really mean flavor. I mean, not always, but let's say 99.9% .9 of the time because taste is really just salty, sour, sweet, and bitter. And then we could talk about umami and a couple of other oral sensations, mm -hmm. but everything else that you've experienced when you eat is actually from your sense of smell and it's flavor. So for example, when you eat bacon, it's just the taste of salt. It's the complex flavor, aroma of bacon that gives you the sensation of bacon, quote unquote, taste, but it's really from your nose. And what's happening is while we're chewing, the aromatic molecules that are in the bacon are being released into the cavity of our mouth. And there's actually an opening at the back of the mouth that goes up to the nose. You may know this from laughing really hard and something in your mouth comes out of your nose or, you know, that, that anyway, there's this open airway passage. And that's why, for example, when you have a cold and you can't smell or food doesn't quite taste right, that's because that airway passage is blocked. But anyway, so what happens is we inhale and the aromas come from inside our mouth and they go up into the nose where they land on the area where the sensory neurons are. And then when we exhale, that kind of whooshes the air by and that's what triggers the sensation. So we have to breathe to be able to experience this. And one of the problems actually that humans have is the potential for choking while eating because we have this opening between our lungs and our, and our airway system and um, our mouth. So, but uh, the other positive thing to being able to have this open airway system is actually we can make the sounds for language. So in evolutionary terms, the possibility of choking was less uh, of a worry than the possibility of us being able to speak from the point of view of advantages. But anyway, we are also the only creature that has the sense of flavor because we have this opening airway. So for instance, a dog who has a fantastic sense of smell with their nostrils, they can sniff out all kinds of things, way lower concentration than we can. They, while they're eating the steak that fell on the floor, all they're really getting is the salt that's in their mouth. They, may, they smelled it before they gobbled it up from their nostrils here, but they're not getting any flavor from inside their mouth the way we are. That's so sad, actually. <laughs> yeah. By the you know, way, very I, lucky. <laughs> I did try your jelly bean thing where you hold oh. your... <laughs> it. Actually, it actually worked. I was like, wow. You know, I was just like, let me let me try this, which was really cool. Now, I, I have a question, right? So can thinking about something actually bring back the sense of smell, right? So you know how you recall... Reversing it, you mean? So can you yeah, reverse it? it. Yeah, basically reversing it. Because sometimes you think about something, all of a sudden you, you feel like you get that, you feel like you smell it and you're like, okay, it's not feasible that where I am that I smell that mm -hmm. sort of smell. Is it that you could recall it that deep? Is it that ingrained, I guess is what I'm asking. So the evidence really says no, that we can't, we don't actually have stored representations of smells so that we can conjure them without the source of the smell being there. But 
Um, there are certain instances where it does sometimes seem to spontaneously happen. Sometimes it spontaneously happens in dreams. Like people will say, I very, very rare, but people say, I, I was smelling such and such while I was dreaming. And it really wasn't the case that anyone was baking anything or doing anything in the kitchen while that was happening. So it is, does sometimes possibly does happen, but we really don't have in general any stored representations. But sometimes because like if you have an extremely strong experience, what I think is going on is you're getting kind of the whole gestalt of that original experience coming back to you and kind of a feeling of the smell comes with it but I would say most likely it's not really the same thing as if you were smelling it again right there and then.